Subnautica, a game created for those people that enjoy cosplaying as Michael Phelps after a traumatic experience. It comes with lots of other stuff of course, like a lot of building and some incredible exploring, some deep sea ocean nightmare traumas, there are also Mensa level puzzle IQ tests, and last but not least more trauma. Let's get into it. I started my adventure aboard the most lovely one bedroom apartment looking like a skate pod that came with a ladder, a chair designed by Roller Coaster Tycoon, as well as a window. The window, however, did not really give me the best first impression, but who can complain in this economy, right? The original ship that got me into this sticky little situation had a slight meltdown, leaving me to accept the fact that I was going to have a lot to deal with in these next coming days. Also, it was quickly brought to my attention that you should always double check the entrance handiwork as some of the objects in my pod start mobilized. After receiving a cheeky slam in the face, I noticed that there was a fire that had broken out inside my pod. Now I enjoy sauna as much as the other guy, however, I didn't feel like the heat was required, so I picked up the nearest super soaker and attempted to save the little I had. Feeling like an arsonist's worst nightmare, I handled the situation as quickly as possible. Next I climbed the ladder in order to get some fresh air, and let me tell you, there were two ways of looking at this situation. One, I could embrace the fact that the first thing I got to see was the remains of my old ship, which means all is not lost. Happy days! Or, hear me out, I could just straight up panic because all I could see around me was vast amounts of ocean. I'm a reasonable man, so I opted to pick a number two. Embracing the panic to its maximum, I figured I might as well check what was still functional in the ship. Turns out the answer was nothing. That's a lie, I did have a handy fabricator that could help me craft items as well as a beautiful medical box at my disposal. Since I didn't have much to do inside the pod without resources, I figured it was time to summon my inner Michael Phelps and head out into the beautiful water to take a look around and see if there was anything in the area. Luckily for me, my knock to the head gave me superpowers to help point out resources. Who says physical trauma ain't useful? Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely. Plausible. And who happens to be the person with that seductive voice? Well, let's be honest, I don't know, but since she was being helpful, I decided to call her Dory. Dory is all I've got right now, so let's be respectful. Me and Dory set our eyes on a goal for the moment, and that goal was to hoard everything and anything that was nearby. As the day came to a close and my inventory was filled to the brim, I headed back to the pod on the way there, though I couldn't resist the urge of grabbing this little guy. Alien life forms may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. Well, it turns out Doris is a hardcore predator, since not only did she call this unlucky soul an alien when we violently landed on its planet, but she also suggested that I would use it for my own survival. So I went over to the fabricator and opted to have the little hobgoblin sacrificed to the laser beam gods. And let me tell you, Doris is a mad genius. Now that I was feeling refreshed, I decided to build anything and everything else that I could thanks to the previous loot, including a scanner. Doris gave me a quick heads up about it. The scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. Thank you, Dory. After that, I crafted a new fancy oxygen tank, since yours truly almost browned already twice. Then equipped with my new oxygen tank and my scanner, I decided I would test it out on the remaining local wildlife in my area. Now, I'm not saying it's creepy to be able to scan living creatures, but keeping an internal Wikipedia page about them may be considered crossing the line. Then again, I'll take the help I can get. Next, I found a crate from the crash site with a sea glide fragment. Apparently, I needed more than one for the blueprint, though. After that, I ran into a bigger fish, and which made me feel smaller than a Catholic child surrounded by priests. Being fully aware how that story might end, I decided instead to sneak around it and check out the plants in the area. Turns out the yellow glowing plants was a silicon usable item, so I picked those as fast as I could. Because every lonely man needs silicon, don't question me. I instantly took it home and started making whatever required silicon. Apparently, one of those things was a knife. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. How is this not a weapon? Wait, what? I feel like there might be a bit to unravel there, Dory, but instead of asking Dory what happened on the planet, I figured it was better to just pursue my blueprint hunting. With a bit of time and tenacity, I eventually found and made the sea glide. By the way, can I also just point out that the artistic design on these tools are kind of sick? I decided I should give the sea glide a go, and since it was the daytime, I got to enjoy it quite a bit. That opinion changed real fast, however, when nighttime hit, now I know what you're thinking, what did I expect from bothering a little guy in his home? Well, you know what, I didn't think that he was going to come after me with explosives. Hey, on the right side I did learn that this is where I could go to get some new fancy resources. I took the new sulfur and made myself a repair tool, which I used to repair everything and anything inside the pod. I started with the power grid, then I moved on to the radio, thinking to myself that MacGyver could really learn a thing or two from me. Once the radio was repaired, I pressed it and I had this reassuring message to say. Rescue operation will be dispatched to your location in 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 hours. 
I guess I should be happy the help was coming in about 90 years. Since I had no real idea of what to do next, I decided I would go hoard some resources. If the 1% can do it, then so can I. As time went on, I got this little radio sign on my screen. Being somewhat of a Sherlock Holmes puzzle solver, I headed straight to the pod. Player pre-recorded distress call. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Yeah, I'm not going. Nah, he's on his own. What's the chef gonna do? Get me out of here? Not a chance. No, no, no. He's on his own. In the end, I still went, of course, to check his safety and not steal his supplies or anything. Upon my arrival, I found his pot with a big hole in the side, as well as something called a Seamoth Fragment. Obviously, something happened here that went sideways, so I feel like he wouldn't judge me if I scanned the Seamoth first. Next, I found a data theme of Bob. Sadly, my mistake here was to instantly play it, and this is when Dory, being the bringer of good news, decided her message was more important. And what was the message, you ask? Well, apparently the ship that doomed me to this aquatic paradise was going to have a little bit of a situation and there was nothing I could do about it. The ship that I arrived on decided to go boom, but luckily for me, the Dory always knows what to say. Congratulations, survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. I hate you, Dory. I hate you with a passion right now. Well, on the bright side, apparently when your ship goes boom, you get rewarded with a radiation suit blueprint. It's a little bit like BP oil offering you a band-aid for the damage they cause, but beggars can't be choosers in this situation. Since I was already in a new zone for me, I opted to go back down and lose some more resources. While I was down there, I discovered some new and some old resources that would come in handy in the long run. But more importantly, I found something called a mobile vehicle bay in another one of those ship boxes. I also found a bioreactor, but at the moment I didn't really care about that because all I wanted to see was this vehicle mobile bay thingy and it sounded awesome. Turns out when I got home, I didn't have the stuff for it though, so I compensated my shame by building something called a Habitat Builder. Now you don't have to be a genius to understand what this thing does. After that, I upgraded my oxygen tank again, because there is my go-to friend on this beautiful planet. As the fabricator finished creating the tank, I inhaled the happy thoughts of not drowning. And then I got a message from the radio. Receiving pre-recorded distress call, laying back. This is LifePod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. I mean, I don't want to, but personally I can't promise anything. I spent some more time getting the last resources needed to build a radiation suit. You know, because now apparently that's something I have to be worried about. Also, I learned that if you have trash in your inventory, for example an outdated oxygen tank, you are supposed to throw it into the ocean like it's not a problem. I mean, my ship's already spilling radiation, why worry about this? Yep, I'm the perfect tourist. 10 out of 10. So after becoming Greta Thunberg's worst nightmare, I opted to make myself a mobile vehicle bay. Now, I'm not too sure what it can produce, but if it's anything like the name suggests, then it should be able to make me something that can take me from A to B. I swam outside and dropped it in the ocean. To my surprise, the thing floats. Once I caught up to it, I realized not only did it have a ladder, but it also had drones. This made me question my usefulness, but I digress. Never mind, drones are trash. Apparently I needed to finish the ship blueprint before it let me start assembly. I headed down in order to find some of those blueprints and ended up running into a part of my old ship at the bottom. The front door was locked, but luckily yours truly always finds the back door. Sadly, I got hit with another locked door, but on the bright side, I found some furniture blueprints, so whatever happens, I will be living a lavish lifestyle at some point. After that, I went around the bend of the shipwreck and discovered a dark pit in the ground. Having obviously survived a crash landing from space, I figure what's the worst thing that could happen down there, plus odds are high that I find some new resources. This new biome or what have you was filled with lots of glow-in-the-dark mushrooms that would make every single Woodstock fan jealous. Also, there was apparently some kind of underwater lava. If you didn't pay attention right there, you might have missed the creepy crawly water snake that just crossed our eyes. But don't worry, for here's another one. I didn't feel like testing if they were aggressive, so I embraced the S key on my keyboard really, really fast. However, lucky days for me, because just outside the biome, I ran into both the laser cutter and the ship blueprints that I was missing. Being a coward is always worth the reward, kids. With the Seamoth learnt, I swam directly to the shipmaker, and thanks to the previous hoarding, I had the resources ready. The Seamoth is a fast, safe mode of transport, but remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. Oh Dory, you always know what to prioritize. Also, why does the ship look like the submarine that had that Logitech controller? It best have a different ending, or I'm calling Jack Cousteau. 
No, honestly, this thing looks amazing. I feel like if I was to challenge someone to a crash test on this thing, the other guy would come off second best. No shot I lose in this lovable thing. Speaking of which, there's a contender right now. Nothing says product testing like cosplaying a crash dummy, you lunatics. Immortality, I can feel it. Also, the wobbly goofball took that hit like a champ and just kept going. I might just want to stay on the good side with those things. Next I want to check on the radio, turns out they've been trying to reach me. They called me lazy for not picking up, however I mean even if I was there on time I couldn't exactly talk to Timmy Two Shoes, I can only receive calls on this end. So I opted to ignore that pointless call and instead spent the night doing something productive like safely exploring the cave I cowardly ran away from earlier. This time I was going to at least be able to explore what kind of resources were lying about. Also inside my safe space. Warning, maximum depth reached, hull damage imminent. Okay, so first of all, the ship with Logitech controller talks. Cool. Secondly, why does Subnautica hate my safe space? I generally don't feel like I'm asking for a lot here. Anyway, I reverse the ship to a mutually agreed upon depth. Then I muster the courage to swim down, knowing that at least I have the Seamoth to swim back to in case something goes terribly wrong. I found Magnite, Gold, and Lithium. Once done with that, I decided to patch some holes in the Seamoth. It wasn't looking too great. Also, because I have zero trust in myself. Me and the Seamoth happily exited the snake infested biome. With nothing but happy thoughts in mind. Now that we had some new resources, odds were quite high that we would be able to make the laser cutter and check out the closed door we found earlier. Apparently I needed and had diamonds, I forgot to mention finding them down there. After that I noticed a message on the radio, so we played it. This is Officer Keen in Light Pod 19. The captain is gone. I have assumed command. The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land. We regroup one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash site. Stay together and good luck. This message will now repeat. Now he could repeat that message as much as he wanted, but right now 1000 meters in that direction was not what I was looking for. Because yours truly was looking to test out his laser cutter theme about me, and I know people come first, attitude is good and all, but I mean I just braved the scary biome. We sliced the door fast, only to be greeted by the second door. Once removed I headed inside the room, I immediately discovered a nifty box that gave me an upgraded oxygen tank blueprint. Meaning obviously ignoring my new captain was the right choice. Also, I found the start of a blueprint for something called a modification station, as well as a propulsion cannon. That's right, a cannon. If I was the captain, I'd forgive me for taking a bit of time at this point. After that, I packed up and headed towards his coordinates. Well, I don't feel like this is on me. Color me shocked, his pod's at the bottom of a dark pit. That's fantastic. What I seem to be learning here is that ordering your escape pods from Wish is a terrible idea. Since the Seamoth couldn't make it all the way down, I had to swim the remaining bit. At the bottom I could see the crashed pot as well as some shiny plants and a fancy data download pad. See these data things never break. Our company invested in quality recording things but couldn't bring themselves to invest in quality life saving objects huh? On the bright side, no corpse inside, so maybe he's okay. Since there was nothing here I went back to my Seamoth. And thanks to the new data pad I was informed that I had new coordinates literally right above my head. It felt like a distance I could handle. By the way, is that land I see? Yes it is! So for the first time since my crash I finally discovered land and I was enjoying the view to its maximum. That being said, Subnautica must have been able to read my happiness and punish me since it quickly chained my island from a happy place to a dark scary vibe real quick. On the bright side I saw another data pad. We have to board the Aurora, repair the long range comms, make contact with the other survivors. We can't be the only two that made it. Those are not the orders the captain gave me, and they are not the orders I'm giving you. This isn't chain of command, it's survival. My obligations as acting commander don't turn on their convenience. Get out of the water. If I get into trouble, I'll send you my coordinates. I can't let you go alone. Then come with me. You don't leave me much choice. Received emergency transmission from second officer Keen, two hours after last activity. Rendezvous was a failure. Intercepted a transmission from Altera HQ, seems they sent a data package to the Aurora. We were intercepted by a Leviathan-class predator before we could reach the ship. Consider the CTO and I lost at sea. Be safe. Keen. Out. Well that's just typical, so they left. And now I'm in a Guillermo del Toro movie all by myself. Wonderful. Oh, I've seen this movie before, it doesn't go well. Thanks to the light on the sea glide, I explored the island a bit. That's when I noticed the structure hanging in the distance. I made my way up the mountain, I could finally make out the building, it was an observation spot of some sorts. Ah, oh, this building's gonna give me tetanus. Interestingly enough, found a new data pad inside. This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. Father was right. We should never have left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. 
They do not want us down there. Well snap bar, way to set a positive tone to the message. And who the heck is they? Anyway, as I was about done exploring the observation deck, the sun started to come up and the view wasn't half bad. Wait, is that another building? Before heading there I decided to scan what I could. I got a door, new plant seats, and a grow bed. As well as the observatory itself, because if I'm stealing I'm gonna do it right. Talk about a satisfying feeling, this scanner is absolutely amazing. Next I started heading down the mountain, that's when I noticed even more buildings. At first glance it would seem like this place was perfect, but that changed when I realized there were some creepy crawlers shuffling about. Being an optimist, I figured maybe they were just cruising around like little crabs. Well, that thought was wrong. No, 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 why did they design this thing to jump? What kind of degenerate created this? I hate everything about this. Thankfully, after a few quick slices with a knife, I realized they were not too strong. After euthanizing the jumpy spider, I went to explore the building, and inside I noticed some form of purple tablet? Figuring at some point it would come in handy, I added it to my inventory. Also I found another data pad, then quickly after that I found another one, and another one, as well as blueprints for ultra glide fins, cementing the fact that I was probably not going to be allowed to spend the rest of my time up here on land. On the bright side, the last thing I found was Stasis rifle schematic, and when seeing this I instantly went to inspect what it was. According to the Pokedex, it was some sort of stun gun, that's as much as I know at the moment. After spending some time listening to the new data pads, I was informed that the people that lived here had resorted to moving into deeper water for research purposes. Personally, I was happy to stick around on solid land, however that's not the way Subnautica is supposed to be played, apparently. Against my will, Subnautica advised me on my next location. On my way there, I discovered some more debris from the spaceship, which also means more loot. That is, if I'm lucky. The debris had a door that needed to be sliced open, which didn't prove too difficult when holding the laser cutter. Inside, I found a submerged tunnel. Thanks, Subnautica. Thank you. Once I passed seven stages of grief crawling through that tunnel, I found another part of the modification station, as well as the full blueprint for the battery charger. Once I felt happy with the looting, I headed towards the coordinates again. That's when I got a cheeky slap in the face about radiation detected in the area. So, I took a moment to check my gear, only to learn that I had never actually made myself the radiation suit. Like much of my life choices, apparently, I didn't think this one through fully. Anyway, there wasn't much to do except for hold down the S key on the Seamoth and head back to the fancy escape pod. Once there, I fabricated the radiation suit and quickly returned to the scene of the crime, feeling more confident than an 8 year old during Halloween. As I recognized the purple shiny mushroom biome, I felt confident knowing I had seen the creatures living here before, so I was not too scared this time. Once inside I noticed the building the coordinates had led me to, it was much bigger underwater base, decked out with fancy observatory windows and built on foundations. I quickly thought to myself that once again Bert and his friends were living a much better life than me, bringing up the question, if he couldn't make it here, I've got zero chance of survival. But I digress, while dodging the purple angry water plants hanging around, I found another data pad. I also scanned myself a new plant wall decoration, as well as a bed. And I found an upgradable oxygen tank again, which is great news. Once I felt like I had collected everything, I noticed my radio was pinging me, meaning I needed to go back to the pod as fast as possible. I went ahead and listened to the message, but instead of it telling me something important, it just pointed me to more survivors that needed help. At this point, however, I was kind of starting to understand that the odds of them being alive weren't that high. Yep, no surprises there, another pod with a hole in it. The lawsuit the Wish Delivered Escape Pod is gonna come with is gonna make my shareholders a bloody fortune. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and ignore the electrical looking angler fish just cruising around the wreckage. Mostly because I don't think my time here was wasted since I see another blueprint box thingy, which we love. Looks like today I discovered a repulsion cannon fragment thingy, and also another data pad. Boy oh boy, it sure is a shame that all these other people keep having flawed escape pods filled with fancy unknown blueprints. It's almost as if they were sabotaged on purpose by some narcissistic loot hoarder. Can't be me though. Finding myself a little bit lost and stocked on data pads, I figured I might as well head home. Once I got to my so-called home, which yes, I am lazy and I still haven't made one, I'm still using the pod, decided that I would crawl to the top of it and sit there and listen to some of the information I've gathered from all these data pads. The biggest thing I seemed to be learning from all this was that everyone, and I mean everyone, was a better survivor than me, yet they all perished in some way or form. Oh, that's not good. But instead of sitting around doing nothing, I decided to invest my time in collecting some more resources, and by that I mean the resources I could find in my vicinity from places that I already knew quite well. Since I wasn't allowed to store any more in the pot, I decided to make myself a storage box and float it out to sea. Eventually, however, I realized I was out of options. I had to explore the big ship that made the lovely early game boom. And that's when I noticed it, the thing that made me hate slash love this game with a passion, the infamous Subnautica Leviathan. Maybe it's like the T-Rex in the Jurassic Park movie, if I don't move I'll be fine, just stay really still for the love of Steven Spielberg. Turns out I was sort of correct, honestly I opted not to really find 
down. I noticed a nook in the big ship that I could fit into and I went straight for it. Ooh, if this thing can swim in here, I'm gonna be angrier than a conservative at a pride parade. Turns out it wasn't that interested in me. I found a spot that seemed accessible inside the wreckage. I swam up to it, leaving the seam off behind. I took another look in case of the Leviathan decided to hit me with a jump scare, but it left me alone. On land, I found a box with a med pack inside. You know that moment when you get a save point before an unknown location with just hints on the boss being really close? Well, this was the same feeling, except instead of a boss, it was tons of creepy, jumpy little monsters. Well, I genocided them all. Turns out, after the genocide, I was still not done. I had found a path I could clearly walk inside. That is, if I had the correct equipment to move the obstacles in my path. So, it seems I needed to finish learning the Repulsion Cannon by the looks of things, which can't be that hard because it's only out there in the ocean. Oh god. It's fine, at least I have my Seamoth to help me, right? My Seamoth ran out of battery. Now, I don't want you to think that because I sound fine that I'm happy. Oh no, I'm internally furious right now. Nothing like swimming home to make a new battery because Doomkopf over here forgot the power is a requirement for survival. <laughs> my blood is boiling. On the bright side, I got back safely and made a new one. Then I put the new battery into the Seamoth again so that I could spend the night searching for this wonderful repulsion cannon blueprint. However, I didn't get very far because suddenly my radio pinged me once again. Aurora, we're approaching the planet now. We have a landing site for you that's... Well, it's better than the alternatives. We've sent you the coordinates. So, 40 minutes for me to go from the pod to the destination. I'm heading straight to the coordinates. I will split the ocean like Moses if I have to. So, a lot of things to unpack here. Firstly, land, hooray. Secondly, a big throbbing looking building over there. Kinda creepy. Thirdly, I made it here in about two minutes. See kids, that's what adrenaline and fear will get you to do. I've never been happier to see land though after spawning that leviathan. I can see my own shadow in the sand. This is paradise. After enjoying myself in the sand, I noticed the gate connected to the big building ahead. Oh, so this is where the tablet goes. Well, that's a big brain moment. And they said I would never pass the cognitive test. Take that education system. I started exploring the building since I had some time. Turns out the building was like a maze. Being a fully responsible adult, I opted to touch and press absolutely everything I could find. Starting with this little fancy thingy mabob. Unknown language. Attempting translation. You know, I reckon I should be given a financial reward for identifying and adding new languages to the data pad at home once this is all over. Your best probability of interfacing with this facility is achieved by accessing the control room in the lower section. So, two points to touch on here, Dory. One, why do you know where the location of the control room is? And two, thanks for the points. As I explored, I ran into a green cube-shaped object. Not really knowing what it was used for, I opted to scan it first. Since growing up, I mostly learned that green is mean. I am a visual learner, don't you judge me. Once I found out there was some kind of power source, I figured I could probably take it. Then after that, I continued further into the fancy building, finding lots of new fancy things along the way. Isn't this thing from Destiny 2? As I ventured to what seemed like the bottom floor, I found a place to put down my recently collected purple tablet, which in turn opened up a room. It's so fancy! At the end of the room, I found a machine. Now, remember when I said I'd touch everything? Well, this was one of those things I probably shouldn't have touched. Ah, oh, this is gonna be a bummer. <laughs> The control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads, Warning, infected individuals may not disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. Well, that doesn't sound great, Dory. Where was the warning? So I made my way out of the massive building with nothing but questions and a bruised arm. Though I did still have an eye on the timer, which had quite a while to go, so I started exploring the island. In one specific cave inside the island, I discovered this random empty gate. Turns out it wanted the ion cube I had picked up. So reckless as I am, I instantly handed it over. Being curious, I couldn't resist the urge to go into it, full well knowing that I had absolutely no idea what was on the other side. I mean, I could have at least thrown a rock or something into it first, you would have thought, but here we are. If I end up dying before the timer goes off, I will email the developers of Subnautica individually one piece of Lego for them all to collectively step on in the morning. It's just a warning. Luckily for everyone involved, it seems like the portal brought me to a nice place instead. In fact, it was so nice I recognized the cave instantly. It was Bert's Island, which apparently had a cave which I completely missed. I for one blame it on the fact that the sun is never up when I'm above sea level. Feeling satisfied with the exploration, I decided to head back since I didn't really want to miss the rescue ship. Sadly, I realized I had no food or water because I am a survival game expert, so I ended up taking the seam off to the pod anyway where a message was waiting for me on the radio. Playing partially translated broadcast. Nine new biological 
all subjects designated. Mode. Hunting. Analyzing. Sharing subject locations with other agents. So I'm starting to think that the escape pods might not have been breached due to bad company budgeting. What the shit was that? And also, I definitely preferred not knowing their language. I mean, who says hunting and analyzing in the same sentence? As I tried to ease my mind waiting for the rescue ship, I did some diving around the pickup location. Turns out there was a pretty fancy blueprint there waiting for me. The Cyclops. Oh, this thing is really fancy. No more need to worry about Logitech controllers when driving one of these, I guess. I found a second one quite quickly after that, actually. There was also another scannable object there, something called a moon pool, which was an incredibly easy thing to locate. Unlike the last piece of the Cyclops fragment, but eventually I found it. That's when I learned that there were more pieces required for the new ship, so instead I opted to wait for the rescue ship. Why is that thing moving? Survivor, we see you. Man, I don't know how you held out down there. We broke an atmosphere, and we're descending towards the landing site. Is that a building down there? What do you mean you can't identify it? Hold on. No turning back now. Positions, everyone. Touching down in 10, 9, 8. It's coming from the building? Change course. Set thrusters to full. Oh, you absolute muppet. I swear I'm not doing this as a weird loot hoarding strategy. What the shit? Oh man, this has to do with that thing the needle machine told us, huh? No one leaves the quarantine. That's messed up. Well, on the right side, more resources for yours truly, if we look at it in a glass half full kind of way, right? So with my rescue plan going slightly offline, I realized I had to find another way to make my dreams come true. And at this point, there was only really one other thing I wanted. That's right, to see what it looks like being above sea level during the daytime. Obviously, that's a lie. I really wanted to see if I could perhaps start making some of the Cyclops. Well, this is horrible and my day is ruined. Who hurt you, Subnautica? Who hurt you? Point them out and I'll fix it. I'll fix it with a goddamn crowbar. Feeling powerless, I decided it was finally time to make a home. And once I started assembly, I started asking myself the question, why didn't I do this on day one? I've been squeezing items into that pod like a lunatic. As you can see, I made a big room, added a door, and quickly learned that apparently livable spaces need power, ergo oxygen. Thus I made a bioreactor, which required, you guessed it, biodegradable materials. Since I wasn't carrying a fish on me, I had to be satisfied with coral. Let's be honest, I'm just as surprised as you that it works, but hey, we have oxygen now. Honestly, this place looks kinda nice when it's all lit up like this. It gives a warm feeling, unlike the darkness we've seen before this. While I was out hoarding loot for my new base, a spooky ghost thing appeared on my visor and what said this. What are you? What am I? You come around here popping your head in like a man that should be on a watch list? What are you? Why not just ask me if I'm wearing my brown pants and be done with it? Not having been given any further information, I continued building inside the new home. I added a radio as well as a moon pool. The moon pool itself was absolutely amazing from the inside. I went out of the base and got into the seamoth and drove it right to the moon pool in order to test if it could be parked inside. Turns out it could, which was an impressive touch to be honest. That is a really impressive view right there. Thereafter, I decided I needed a fabricator in my base, as well as a couple of storage boxes. Big fancy storage boxes. I also went out on a fish hunt in order to fill the bioreactor, and now my home should be safe from power issues for a while. Since the game expects you to have a logical understanding of direction, I figured I'd do myself the favor and just make a beacon. Yeah, I get lost a lot. What happened next caught me by surprise. I was nonchalantly adding a window to my house when I got introduced to something called hull damage, which occurs when you add too many structures to your home. Imagine if I had just the mental capacity to look at the big white text in the top left of my screen while building. Now you know why I can't have nice things. The pot didn't make me have to deal with any of this. Notice how I tried repairing the damages with the repair tool, which worked. However, as one hole got patched, another one opened up and the room was filling incredibly fast with water. Play Subnautica happy, you'll love it happy. If I knew it required a handyman skill set, I would have known in advance I wasn't suited to handle this game. Luckily enough, my two brain cells successfully had a moment, and I noticed the text saying the keyword reinforce, meaning all I really needed was to add more foundation. With that done, I patched up the current holes inside the building, this time a little bit more successfully. Oh, thank you, Satan. No more goldfish cosplaying for me. 
I decided it would be nice to have a place for batteries to charge, so I added that quickly. Then I chose to listen to the radio, which has been pinging me since the little flooding incident. Turns out it was the HQ with a long story, but the main gist of it all, in short, was that they shared the captain's door code with me for the big radioactive ship. And like a true procrastinator, I instead chose to continue adding things to my building, like a scanner room. This thing was fantastic. Not only was it going to give me a scanned view of the ground around me, it could also point out the resources nearby, meaning nothing was safe anymore from my Smog the Dragon loot hoarding. Thanks to the beautiful room, I actually located the part of the propulsion cannon blueprint that I was missing for my adventures. And with that collected, I instantly went back home to make it. <laughs> Man, this thing looks like an orphan maker if I've ever seen one. With the cannon being officially in my inventory, I set out on my planned adventure. Which means I was back on the ship again, the same place that I genocided 42 creepy crawlers. I took out the cannon and instantly got taught a lesson in physics, which was cool. By pointing the beam of the cannon on certain objects, I was able to move them. So, with little to no effort, I managed to successfully move the crates out of the way. Let me be clear, if I had one of these at home, I would never walk to the kitchen with my dishes ever again. Not once. Never. Once removed, I headed into the newfound path, only to instantly be greeted with a wall of fire. Luckily for me, there was a nearby anti-arsonist tool, so that got handed quickly. I burnt myself a little bit though, but not too bad. The next obstacle was swimming past a bunch of electrical cables, randomly dangling around after the crash. Luckily, it wasn't too hard to navigate. Once past that, I ran into a door, thinking this is where I should use the code they gave me. I feel like a paraplegic trying to do somersaults here. This is my nightmare. Who designed this? Ooh, Subnautica devs, don't be surprised if you find me lying under your bed after this. Turns out apparently this was not the correct door for the code that the HQ had given me. Luckily, right behind me, there was a laser cuttable door. This was at least something that I knew I could handle. It didn't take long for the door to crumble, and with that, a new path was secured, which in turn led me to a hallway into a new big room. This is like a phobia cocktail. Go up, burn, stay down, drown. What I'm getting from all this is fear, and oh, good. The next room is a maze. Wonderful. With a bit of tenacity and logical thinking, I made to what seemed like a bit of a safe place. Up the faint black box signature originating on the other side of the hull breach in this room. Dory, I'm going to be the black box soon. I found a panel that I could repair by one of the doors, which I quickly fixed with my newfound handyman skills. And more fire. Fantastic. I used my fire extinguisher on the flames, only to quickly realize that it wasn't actually blocking my path at all. Listen, I've never told anyone that I am a clever man. Be patient with me, I'm nervous. In the following room, I found what seemed to be the reactor core, but all that my eyes really noticed was the free loot in the middle. Ooh, this looks fancy. I jumped down into the water below, but never quite figured out what to do, so I did a few laps for cardio practice, then I headed back to the room where Dory talked about the black box. In this room, I realized there were massive Power Ranger armors lying around, and even better, they were scannable. Ooh, Power Rangers assemble! I'm about to use this thing for all the right reasons. Fishies better watch out! Turns out I needed a few of them for the blueprint to actually be usable. Luckily for me, they were all in the same room. I just needed a bit of jumpy skills. This is gonna be fun. Turns out the real path I should have taken required parkour knowledge, which, luckily for everyone involved, my survivor happened to have. Don't you guys dare sit there and not be impressed. Guess we found the living quarters. I stole everything. If I could pick it up, it was going to come with me. I got posters, bags, data pads, food, water, the kitchen sink, you name it. It is coming with me. During my loot frenzy, I also ran into the captain's quarters, which gave me the option of entering in the code that the HQ wanted me to use. Wait, is it not here? Or did I write that wrong? Bet you I wrote that wrong. Don't mind me, just gonna fat finger every single key here. Yeah, I wrote that wrong. Listen, there's a lot of danger and stress going on here. People make mistakes. Once inside the captain's office, we found a data terminal that I guess we were here for. Oh snap, rocket blueprint. Needless to say, I was more than satisfied with the result from exploring the ship. All in all, we got one spaceship blueprint, one Power Ranger blueprint, Cyclops module, not that I can build that yet, and some decoration stuff. I don't think anyone's ever been given this many tools to survive. I'm looking forward to finding out how I messed this up. First things first, we're going home. Listen guys, I figured out how to avoid PTSD from this experience. All you really need to do is make yourself a cozy corner. Can't be scared when looking at this view. Don't act like you're not impressed. After establishing a safe space, as the kids like to call it, I decided it was time to look into the requirements for the rocket, since I was guessing it wasn't going to be free. Oh, so I just start with a platform. Ooh, it's gonna be bad. I need to collect some stuff for the computer ship. Apart from that, I had what was required. I'd love to say I was surprised by this, but honestly, I've been looting for days. Once I had all the required components collected, I went back to the vehicle bay, secretly hoping this time it would offer me something more secure than a submarine controlled by a Logitech controller. This is the rudest way of insulting my newly crafted underwater home that I might have seen to date. I just spent days farming and setting up this beautiful deep sea water base, and then you give me a blueprint that'll literally cast a shadow on my house. If this thing sinks, my house is gone. It'll be flattened like a pancake and I'm gonna be fuming. That being said, I might just move up here in that case. Alright platform, what do you need? You've already taken my happiness. A Neptune gantry in exchange for petty resources. A deal. And here we go, that looks like the elevator thingy for spaceships. Is gantry the normal word for that? 
I need a dictionary. A gantry crane is a crane built atop a gantry. Who wrote this? After accepting the fact that dictionary writers are garbage people, I was told that for the next part of the ship I would require nickel ore, something I'd yet to find. So I headed out in the hopes of finding the resources required, but having the attention span of a sterilized dog, I instead found myself distracted by giant balloons. But it wasn't all a waste of time, because under the balloons I discovered this weird time capsule, something left behind by Subnautica's creators, which could be seen as a bad idea since I have some words to tell them. Inside, however, there were gifts, as well as a lovely photo. Well played, Subnautica devs, well played. Can't have an angry player harass you if you keep them distracted with gardening. Geniuses. I went back home and started making grow beds. I made one inside the house because it adds a touch of je ne sais quoi. Turns out only certain seeds could grow indoors outside of water, which is acceptable. With this being the case, I also figured I would place some outside of the base. Farming alien plants is a proven survival strategy. Craig McGill survived 47 months on a healthy, raw, salad of live tree roaches and stank root. I swear she only appears when she can rub information into my face about better survivors than me. That or she knows how to bait me into trouble because suddenly I got this message on the radio. This is Life Pod 2 coordinates attached. We're way past our safe depth and bleeding O2. We'll have to swim for the surface, but it's 500 meters straight up. I don't think it's coincidence at all that Dory just talked about alien sea plants and the radio is sending me into unknown water. Ah, uh, she's gonna murder me. It's a goddamn setup. On my way to the coordinates, I ran into a shipwreck that I hadn't explored before. I made a quick stop at the wreck just to check what was inside. And to my surprise, it was the last part of the modification station. Which was good since I may have forgotten about its existence. After that, I continued the adventures, coming into a very spooky biome that gave me more Guillermo del Toro vibes. Oh good, spooky trees. Wonderful. I started descending into the pitch black water, knowing full well that I was going to have to swim the last bit, but that's when I ran into something. <laughs> I hope you can stick that idea in a rectal thermometer and swallow it. That is not okay, I am not good with this, <laughs> screw this. No, I would much rather shit in my hands and clap than go close to that thing. So with a mixed set of emotions I opted to swim down to the coordinates regardless of my new friend. Once I got to the bottom, I found a broken pod, which is tradition at this point, with a fancy data pad inside. So I grabbed that as quick as I could. After that, I made my way back to the Seamoth again, only really feeling safe once I was inside. Not knowing what was valuable in the area, I didn't do too much looting. I grabbed some more plants and some weird blood stuff, but that was about it. I'm starting to think these data pads are just a way to make me run into scary stuff at this point. Once I got home, I made a new grow bed. That's when I learned if I break my own plants with a knife, I get more seeds. Anyone with an understanding of plants would have figured this out ages ago, but I've said it before, I'm not a smart man. I level with you guys. My green thumb, as people like to call it, is non-existent. I am not supposed to be planting seeds. This is not my calling. That being said, that stuff is gonna look good. Once inside, I also made the modification station, which to my surprise was an upgraded fabricator. This is what I was probably supposed to look for and build ages ago, but better late than never. So I started by upgrading my oxygen tank to the ultra high capacity because priorities and whatnot. I want you all to pay attention to the oxygen incline. This is what it feels like to be related to Aquaman if you ask me. After that I made the obvious choice of upgrading my thermal blade. And much like a kid that's been handed a lightsaber, I started feeling overwhelmingly powerful. Yet power didn't change the fact that I still hadn't found any of the ore I required, so I set out to sea again in the pursuit of my rocket progress. With the information gathered from the previous looting, it seemed like there was only one place that really gave me a lot of new blueprints, and that was the same lovely place that blasted my recent rescue ship. So without further ado, I made my way there, hoping that I missed something in the area. Oh, I do not like this island. Turns out I was not wrong. I found something called an alien containment, which is most definitely where I'll put Dory if she acts up again. I also found a grappling arm for the Power Ranger suit, which was slick, and then I found a torpedo arm, which also belonged to the Power Ranger suit as well as the Cyclops thermal reactor that I had no idea if it was an upgrade or part of the Cyclops itself. Either way, I was happy. Needs to say I was having a blast. That was until I realized it was nighttime. Then this happened. Like, can I get out? 
that, my friends, was the sound of true fear. I have never been so close to calling for an exorcist before. I now go to bed every night pouring a salt circle around my computer. Screw this! In the manliest fashion, I instantly opted to look for a nearby cave and headed straight for it. I was without a doubt going to spend the entire night there. I had no interest for looting at night time anymore after that. Yeah, this is a good spot. I'd rather lick an electrical socket than go out there again. That's not happening. Sadly enough, there is no reward for being a coward, so eventually I did go out again, but only when the sun came up, and that's when I found another time capsule. Inside the capsule, I was rewarded with another thermal knife, which is good if I want to dual wield, I guess, but more importantly, I got a little Aurora ship toy. Ooh, this thing is going straight to my happy spot in the home, nothing else matters. That was incorrect, something else did matter as it turns out, in fact something massive. I successfully found one of the missing pieces for the Cyclops ship. So I scanned the piece as fast as I could, now feeling a complete new energy burst to my scavenging trip. I did also realize that this piece that I found was in a different biome from where I expected it to be, so I came to the obvious realization that the last piece was probably not far away, yet most likely not in this biome. Being close to the main crash ship, I figured it was most likely near that location in that case. So since I had a plan, I followed it to the Aurora. And guess what? I was right! It's a rare sentence to come out of my mouth. And that was it, I had finally pieced together all the required blueprints for the ship. Feeling over the moon of happiness, I thought to myself, nothing could go wrong now. So I went straight back to where I parked my steam off. That's why I learned something difficult. When one thing is given, one thing is taken. How? How? I didn't even park it there. Why is it flying? What do you mean? Refusing to let this get to me, I opted to swim all the way home and put together the Cyclops. If this thing spawns 90 meters up in the sky, I'm going to commit a war crime. They're going to have to put me on a list somewhere. As I noticed the outline of the ship, I quickly realized the Cyclops was huge. Only experienced Helms people should attempt to pilot this vehicle solo. First of all, that felt like a personal attack. Secondly, watch the damn rocket platform! That's my way out of this! Having apparently decided to instantly test if the Cyclops was made by Wish, I opted to inspect it. And boy, was this thing beautiful. In fact, it was so beautiful, Dory decided to let me enjoy the ship in silence. I climbed into the Cyclops and was instantly greeted with a long hallway. There was also a ladder to the command room, however, I opted to go away from that because being a loot hoarder, I started by inspecting the storage boxes, as one should. And the next room had an internal Power Ranger holder, meaning this is the ultimate Power Ranger Transformer, alright? At the end of the hall, there was two ladders, both leading to the engine room, and the engine was massive. Hopefully that means I'll be safe, of course, but you never really know, do you? Wait, are those the batteries? Those are massive. Oh, I'm gonna need so many big batteries for this. The next room had a missile silo, as well as easy access shipboarding, which in turn made me feel very safe, since if something goes horribly wrong, at least I'll be able to eject in time. I'm making the final room the command room. I love this ship. I also found out that I could name the Cyclops, so I made sure to pick something fitting of my driving skills. <laughs> Listen, I could have called it Ocean Gate. It could have been way worse. With this newfound power at my hands, I decided it was time to visit some deeper coordinates that my data pads have given me a while back. And the first one on that list was one of Bert's data pads. Him and his family slash friends is set up in the deep. Remember when he said, they don't want us here? In retrospect, this is a horrible plan. Nevertheless, it's too late now. Surrounded in an unknown maze of a biome, I made my way towards a massive underwater structure built with lots of observatories. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that thing looks like it could do with a new coat of paint. If you're asking me, that is. Style points for the triple circular floor, though. I had no idea that was an option. So I disembarked the Cyclops and instantly got hit with two warning signs about my cosplay of Aquaman. Once I got inside the base, I found some data pads, I found some blueprints for quick feet, and I found a Cyclops shield module, as well as some more wonderful data pads. Feeling satisfied that nothing had eaten me on my little voyage, I decided it was time to head back home. Oh boy, that looks like a tight fit. And in fact it was, but we made it through. Once at home, I decided to make more storage boxes, since I couldn't help but fill the Cyclops up with anything and everything that I could salvage in the area. Thereafter, I made a battery charger for the Cyclops, because running out of battery in a random spot in the middle of the ocean was just not an option I was willing to toy with. Wait, have I always been able to self-scan myself? Am I that slow? Self-scan complete. Bacterial infection in your system is progressing, detecting skin irritation and immune system response. Further data required to identify bacterial strain. Well now I wish I hadn't realized that was an option. Thanks Dory, like always you've been great. <laughs> After Dory's commonly disappointing message, I decided I'd make myself happy. And how do I do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. By making myself a Power Ranger, of course. It is normal when first piloting a prawn suit to feel a sense of limitless power. Prawn operators receive weeks of training to counteract this phenomenon. You will have to make do with self-discipline. 
Honestly, I really thought you and I were going to be friends at the start of this story, but every time I hear your voice, it makes me want to drop kick a radio. I decided to test the driver's seat in the Power Ranger armor. The mobility and the ease of use was incredibly satisfying. Ooh, look, I can be a Leviathan dentist now. I bet you I'll get at least two hits in before becoming lunch. However, since realizing that losing to a Leviathan or gravity for that matter was an everlasting option, I decided it would be good to make a second seam off in case of emergency. Don't you worry, buddy, nothing's gonna happen to you. Next, I decided to upgrade my Cyclops depth model to the Mark 1 version. This meant that I could officially descend to 900 meters deep. I'm starting to question my logical thinking here. Why would I want to go deeper again? Oh, I hate this. But you know what cures hate and fear? That's right, adding stuff to my new happy corner. And I may agree, I might have gone a little bit over the top with it, but these are scary times and comfort is officially a must. Feeling like an interior decorator, I added in a desk, the Aurora toy model, some green plant walls, a shelf, and a coffee machine. As well as I moved some of the bags for a more stylish touch. Mary Kondo's got nothing on me. And as a final touch to my beautiful base, I added in the alien container. In this case, it was mostly going to be used as a massive aquarium, of course. I filled it up with some nearby fish, mostly in case the bioreactor needs some fuel. With my mind of put at ease, well, as ease as it possibly could be, I accepted my fate and decided to continue exploring the deeper waters. And that's when I found a cave. Now I'd love to tell you that I was excited about going into this place, but that would be a lie. However, baited by the potential of loot, I embraced the environment. As I got quite far into the cave, I came to this odd room filled with new interesting creatures. Well, that and one really big creature. Yep, don't mind me, just come back it up. How is it that every interesting place has at least one leviathan in it? Is it some sort of torture tactic? As I was in reverse, I decided that to increase my odds of survival, I would inspect the area in my swimwear instead. Turns out the idea wasn't half bad. There's a chance the leviathan has limited hearing, which would be something super useful to know. That being said, this is still stupidly scary. Turns out the risk, however, was worth it, because as I explored, I found plenty of resources. I found uranium, magnite, ruby, and most importantly of all, I frickin' found nickel ore. Given that I had storage space, I decided I would grab as much as possible before heading home. As I left the ship, however, to get more resources, I noticed Mr. Fear Factor had also taken an interest to my ship. At first I thought that everything was probably still alright, but then that changed fast when he laid his eyes on me instead of the Cyclops. Not me, not me, not me, not me. Oh, I missed the door. I missed the door. As I was handling the Predator with the skillful talent bestowed to me from watching numerous Jackie Chan movies, I managed to successfully and safely get into the ship. Once inside, I got myself over to the command deck as fast as possible and opted to leave the cave with whatever so-called dignity I had left. Oh, you lost interest now. Not so fun when you have to work for your food, huh? I got myself back home. That's when I noticed the fish in the aquarium had multiplied, as well as they had started getting these small green dots on them. It looks like a kindergarten play day in there, boys. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Happily ignoring that issue, I decided to finish making a Neptune booster for the rocket ship with the recently collected nickel ore. The greedy rocket then proceeded with telling me it now wanted more stuff I'd never seen before for the fuel reserve. You'd think at this point I could slab in a bunch of fish into the fuel reserve and call it a day, but no. Anyway, not knowing where to find the new required power cells I required, I went for a random scavenger hunt. And that's when I ran into a wonderful surprise. Yep, I found something called a vehicle upgrade console, which made me a happy happy chappy since it was something that could only make my life easier. Fearing that the requirements were going to be horrible, I was pleasantly surprised, leaving me to think I should have found this ages ago. I am not a good scavenger. Once I got home, I found out that the vehicle module goes into the moon pool room, which led me to making a storage module upgrade firstly, which was gray as well as secondly making a Power Ranger suit depth module upgrade. I also made the Power Ranger suit a drill arm because violence is key to my happiness. And lastly, I made a seam off depth upgrade. This one felt kind of insulting though, because I had one of these before in the old Seamoth ship, but you know, gravity decided to kidnap that ship. If you're wondering, yes, I am still salty about it. Since I figured the Power Ranger suit would be the most useful, I decided to max out the installations I could do for it. Let me tell you something, if I lose this thing, I am going to drink asbestos. Now that I know you have that in mind, you're welcome. I knew there was a pile of resources below my house, and I wanted to practice with the new drill before needing it in a hostile environment. Dude, this thing is sick. Now I really am a dentist. Come at me, Leviathans. Now, finding myself a little option left, I realized that it was about time for me to use this Power Ranger suit in the deeper waters. If I had 1,300 meters, I should probably try to use it at least. Am I happy about this scenario? No. Do I have a choice? Not really. I need that battery thingy. It's definitely nowhere near here. Thus, reluctantly, I went back to where I thought the Nickel Cave was. I ended up getting lost, though, and apparently found a completely different cave. I need to start bringing those beacons. Inside this cave, however, I did run into a massive sneaky alien base, so I guess it wasn't really that terrible of a choice in the end after all. Oh, I've seen this movie, it doesn't end well. 
I got into my tidy whities and swam to what seemed like an entrance. Turns out the entrance was a hole and something had gone a bit wrong here by the looks of it. On the bright side there was this untouched door which wanted a purple tablet since yours truly had recently had to use this for other Mensa level puzzles I now carry one on me at all times. Behind the door I got my hands on the data file within the base. Specimen research. Well at least they were learning something I guess. I considered getting oxygen before furthering my exploration of the lab, but since being a coward isn't very gamer-like, I changed my mind quick. Something that I would come to regret quite fast, since the air was more or less knocked out of my lungs when I started seeing dissected creatures all over the place. Oh, uh, this is the worst. Uh, I don't want to be here at all. So instead I went back to the Cyclops and continued exploring the area, since the alien lab gave me a terrible vibe. It didn't take long before I ran into a see-through leviathan, not wanting any attention I set the cyclops to slow mode and proceed in its direction, hoping that my theory about sound was correct. If this thing bites the hull of my ship down here, I am writing Subnautica devs an angry letter. It's just happening, okay? Be cool. Luckily for me it seems to have worked, the less sound I made the easier my life was. Take notes, Karens of the world. As I switched the camera of the Cyclops to under the ship, it was quickly brought to my attention that there was a pit below, which went further down. I tried going down, but quickly got reminded by the Cyclops that I was at my maximum depth. So instead, my only real option at this moment in time was to find a safe spot to park and utilize the Power Ranger suit. Please, 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 go up, 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 up. I got lucky. I found a safe spot and made my way to the beautiful Power Ranger suit. And once inside, I started the descent. With little to no knowledge of what was waiting for me below, I figured I would just run it. Now, I was fully aware at the time that there was a leviathan still around, however I figured that the gravity would beat the speed of the leviathan. Turns out I was right, though the leviathan did look hungry for a second there. As I got further down, I noticed the environment changing from dark and cold to fiery and nightmarish. Oh god, this was a terrible idea, wasn't it? How am I even getting back up? Not investing too much time into my worries though, I opted to continue my exploration mostly since my options were now limited at best. This is some Guillermo del Toro shit right here. At least the manta ray looks innocent and nice. Just a few seconds of exploration brought me to my first find of important resources, the Kia Knight, which was something I needed to further my rocket ship. I love this drill so so much. Needless to say, I stuffed my Power Ranger suit with as much resources as possible, thinking that it must be better to have extra in case of necessity. After that I decided I should set up a little outpost, but please remember I have never claimed to be smart, in fact I have often proven the opposite. What do you mean Happy? Why would it be dumb to make a base at this depth? Well friends, let me explain. We learned earlier during the game that power is required for a base to work, and I, as is tradition, did not think about that little requirement. This is in fact the definition of shooting oneself in the leg without thinking about the consequences. At least on the bright side it can make storage. That's right Subnautica, checkmate, checkmate. Next I went out to repair the Power Ranger suit, that's when I got this message. Detecting alien materials and a massive energy signature. Reading originates within the natural structure at the center of this chamber. So don't go to the center, got it. In a desperate attempt to not head to the center, I found an alien cave entrance, which once again led me to a new spooky alien base. Inside I found this stack of ion cubes to my pleasant surprise, which I used to activate a portal in the base. Not really knowing where it went to, I opted to take my chances anyway, since the fire damage down here was killing me really fast. Oh, this is the place that blew up my rescue ship, happy days. With the knowledge that I could swim home from here, which was something I desperately needed, I took the opportunity. Yay, freedom! Once back at the base, I made myself some much needed items for the lava base, as well as a prawn suit jetpack since getting back to my cyclops would be impossible without it. I also took the opportunity to fix my severely lacking health situation while I was at it. And once I was fully sated with food and water, I looked in my bag making sure I had everything I could possibly need down there. Next I took the seam off. Listen, not even Aquaman would have swam this distance twice, okay? Don't judge me. After passing the portal back, I realized there was a basement level that had a door requiring another purple tablet. Once the door was open, I went up to the data file computer and learned that this was a containment center. As I continued exploring, Dory appeared with useless information to share. Primary, alien facility location updated. Volcanic area connected to this cave system at depth 1.4 kilometers. Thank you, Dory. Very useful. There was another data file computer nearby that I interacted with, this one giving me information about ion power data. Oh, these are the batteries I need, dude! Being overjoyed with finding all the resources required for my next spaceship upgrade, I decided nevertheless to try and make my way back to the lava base. And let me tell you, it was quite a close call at one point. A little bit too close even, some would say. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Once I was mentally composed again, I set up a thermal power generator, as well as a fabricator. 
I then use that fabricator to make myself a beacon, because let's be honest, I get lost a lot. Like, a silly amount of times, to be honest. I'm calling it home too. With that done, I proceed to make myself more stuff in the fabricator. I made myself some purple tablets, as well as I made myself some blue tablets, because you never know when they switch it up on me. Well guys, I have a really dumb plan. You see, outside this base there is a hole, which goes deeper than my Power Ranger suit can go, and I'm gonna go explore it. I would however like to point out that the line between courage and stupidity is really thin, so please don't judge me. <laughs> wait, wait, what is that? Why would they put that thing here? What is that? I'm not even playing now, this is the most masochistic thing I've ever had done to me in a scary setting. On the bright side, there is some kind of alien base over there, I just need to treat this like one of those other leviathans and move in silence. <laughs> wait, no, he's seen me, no, 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 not like this, screw this. I will literally pay you, what the hell is this now? Could you really pick a worse time? I am what you seek, want to help you. I'm seeking a little bit of private space, guys, what the shit? Oh my god, okay, run it back, round two. On my second attempt, I made it. Let's just say I got lucky and call it even from there. This place was scarier than going on a date with Jeffrey Dahmer at this point. I was not interested in doing that again. Upon going through the entrance between the water and the alien base, I instantly came to a door that required a tablet. Luckily, I had made some just before in the fabricator at home. Once placed, the door quickly opened up and led me to a long, ominous corridor. Well, isn't this creepy? At the end of the corridor, I found another pile of ion cubes, which I decided to scan for some unknown reason. Let's be honest, that was probably just on adrenaline from the previous thing. I started by exploring the place. Turns out it was filled with different rooms, all containing different interesting things. Some of the rooms had species in them, some of them were archives, but most importantly was the ones that had portals. Thank you, Subnautica, thank you. Needless to say, I had one ion cube on me, and I used it on the first portal I saw. I would much, much rather go out into the unknown than seeing that creature again. With the portal prepared, I opted to go down into the main room again. The next room I visited had water in it. Being the genius that I am, I opted to go into that water without a care in the world. Are you here to play? Others came here once. They built these walls. They played alone. They bored me. Now they're gone. And instead, we have you. We are curious whether you swim with the current or fight against it as they did. I am 100% swimming in whatever direction that you are swimming, friend. It turned out that this was the spooky ghost that came on my screen before. It could not only talk, but it also seemed like it was friendly. That being said, I still held my mini lightsaber up. Doubtful it would achieve much. Not really knowing what to do, I swam around a bit, surprisingly unharmed from all the creatures. I ended up inspecting some egg-like things on the bottom that probably have something to do with the Leviathan, and a portal covered in sand. I went closer to the eggs only to realize that there was an ion cube holder there waiting for me, but before dealing with that I decided I'd rather run a scan on the eggs. Turns out, let's call her Tina, didn't really appreciate me being that close. Tina had in fact mastered the skill set of staring into my soul without saying a single word. Was she flirting with me or was I going to die? It was really just a coin flip at this point. Tina, you better stop fighting with me, otherwise I'll fall in love with you. After whispering my safe word, pineapple by the way, to Tina, I decided it was time to place the ion cube into its holder. That's when Tina decided it was time to get social again and speak with me. My young need to hatch, to play outside this place. We have been here so long. The others built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. I took a moment to ponder my choice, but honestly it seemed quite evident that all Tina wanted was for her kids to be free. It turns out she needed someone to do something with the eggs, and no one was willing to help her out until now. Don't you worry Tina, I've got your back. So being a helper, I decided I would do it, and in return she decided to blow away the sand covering the portal to her chamber. Those are some prime lungs, Tina. Way to keep up your cardio routine. All the power to you. 
Once again, needing to utilize an ion cube, I opened the gateway. In doing so, Tina decided to have one more quick conversation. With the passage you have opened, my young can leave this place. But first they must feel the time is right and break free of their shells. This is what the others could not force from me. To you, I give the secret willingly. Thanks to my generosity, I guess, she decided to give me a blueprint for some enzyme potion. Thinking to myself, this might be a cure to that thing that I require in order to leave this water planet without being shot down. Without much thought, I chose to enter the portal. Turns out it took me right outside the cannon base, meaning that my Seamoth was literally just around the corner. Filled with more joy than a convict on Meatloaf Day, I got into the Seamoth as fast as possible and started to look for the plants required for the enzyme potion. The plants themselves took a few days to collect, I'll be honest. Sure, one of them was at my house, but most of them were scattered around in different biomes. The one that took the longest was actually the sea crown, which was found just below Tina's incubators. I opted not to put on my wife beater and instead focused on making the potion, of course. Man, I'm so excited. I don't really know what to do with my hands at this point. I'm just so excited. As I returned to Tina, I didn't really know what to do with the enzyme, but luckily for me, the computer connected to the incubator for her kids did, so I placed the enzyme into the machine. It didn't take long after that for the water temperature to change drastically. All of the eggs hatched, and Tina's kids were starting to swim around freely. Tina then had some final words to share. My young are swimming for the shallows. I thank you. Their freedom is my end. What will it be like, I wonder, to go to sleep and never wake up? Perhaps next we meet, I will be an ocean current, carrying seas to a new land. Or a creature so small, it sees the gaps between the grains of sand. Farewell, friend. Oh, that's it? You're just gonna pass away now? Fair play, Tina. I got into the Seamoth and drove it back out the portal, not having really paid attention to the fact that the mini Leviathan army had already swam out past me. Hoping that these kids were going to grow up on the straight and narrow, I figured I could get out and check up on them. That's when I realized they had started dropping some orange bubbles in the water. Being however a man of focus, I instead opted to scan them in case I needed to be there to point them out in a lineup for their future crimes. Once I knew I had the little runt registered, I shifted back my attention to the thing I was probably supposed to focus on, which was the orange bubble. Turns out the mix of poop from the Emperor Leviathans and the enzyme we inserted into their incubator chambers had successfully merged into a non-threatening looking substance that quickly made its way into my suit and all over my arms. So this is either going to be a really good thing for me, or this will be what sets off my villain arc. At this point I'm okay with either of those two options. Before choosing, however, I decided it was better to make a scan checkup. Self-scan complete. Vital signs normal. No remaining sign of bacterial infection. Oh, I always knew I loved you little runts. I never doubted you for a second. This meant that there was only one more obstacle remaining. I needed to get all of the resources from my Power Ranger suit home, which meant that I had to make my way back the same way that I came from in the beginning. Because without the Kyanite, I wouldn't be able to craft any of the remaining ship parts. I know it, you know it, we all know it. As the Angry Leviathan passed by, I took the opportunity to dart through the water. Knowing full well that he was probably going to come after me, I opted to not even try to make eye contact this was officially me dealing with prison rules. There was just one goal, make it to the shower without dropping the soap. And to that note, let me tell you that nothing has ever had my fully divided attention more than this moment right here. Both the right and left side of my brain were actually functional for a brief moment. That was until I turned around and saw that guy doing some hula hoops behind me. <laughs> Screw it, I'll join the gang. White, black, Latino, I don't care. Sign me up, please, for the love of God, swim faster. Turns out I had lead and luck on my side once again. The angry Leviathan had decided I wasn't going to need to pay a toll today. He let me go out with all of my limbs attached and I think Tina would be very proud of him for his restraint. That's right, you hooded lunatics. I made it. I don't think any of you doubted me for a second, obviously. But I can taste my internal organs right now. Oh, God. With that part completed, all that remained was to utilize the jetpack in the Power Ranger suit to make my way back up to the Cyclops ship. And that's when I noticed the Ghost Leviathan, the little fellow that I had graciously managed to ignore the last time we met. Not being left much of a choice, however, I decided I'd take on the challenge and see if I could sneak past him once again. I found a ledge that would be the last required ledge for me to jump successfully to exit the Nightmare Biome, so more gracefully executed than an elephant doing pirouettes, I made it. And that's when it happened, I was given the opportunity of being the dentist that I had constantly been hyping myself out to become. <laughs> Go on son, what you got? Left hook, right hook, let's do this! 
Turns out that I had officially graduated from dentist school of honors. The ghost leviathan opted to pack it up and run away. Not wanting to push my luck, I took the victory as it was and quickly got myself out of the corner with only getting to the cyclops as my current goal. <laughs> you guys didn't doubt me for a second, did you? Good, because I doubted myself the entire time. I'm happy someone was confident about the situation. I got back into the cyclops with a weight off the shoulders. I now only needed to head back to the base. And once back, I went straight to the rocket ship holding all the required resources in my inventory. I finalized the fuel reserve and watched the little drones put in all the hard work that they normally do. Next they wanted me to make the Neptune's driver pit, meaning I was at the very end part of the construction. So I went to the Cyclops and made the shield that was required quickly. Once again the little drones did their thing and let's be honest, the ship was coming together really smoothly. Ah, oh, would you look at that, that looks like freedom right there. And since I'm a petty person, I decided that I was going to bring some of the toys with me into space. I'm not sharing with anyone. They can find their own toys, and I hope that you can only find seaweed and disappointment. With that done, I took my bag filled with goodies and used the rocket ship elevator. With a short walk on the catwalk, I entered the rocket ship, and at this point I started to legitimately ask myself questions. Nothing ever goes this smoothly for me. I had managed to get past every stage of the last build very easily. Surely something would have to go wrong at some point. And that's when it freaking happened. I was turning on all the specs with the ship in preparation, only to have Dory whisper some negativity to me. I was so close. Cannot launch rocket while quarantine. Enforcement platform is still active. Realistically, I should probably be thankful. But I have anger issues, which I instantly took out on the ship, of course, like a bonobo. Once I cooled down a bit, I went back to the alien base with the gun, the same place that stabbed me previously and told me that I was sick. The machine did its thing with the emotional intelligence and caring of a toaster oven, but nevertheless I knew this was the only choice, so I embraced the situation in its entirety. Ah, uh, one last prick, come on, just like going to the vet's office, nothing but happy thoughts. To my surprise, the alien building powered down after this, meaning I was probably free. Well, looks like it's the perfect weather to depart this terrifying water prison. I would love to say I'd miss it, but that would be a lie. At least I'll have the trauma for life. Ready to launch on your command, Captain. Launch, launch, launch. Launch, launch. Please launch. Launch in 10, 9, Oh, you birds, we have to get off. You're coming seven, with me otherwise. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, here we go! Time capsule jettison. Caution approaching orbital debris field. Joking, the damn intern was a robot all along? I knew it! Orbital debris field clear. So that's it then. We made it. Performing gravity turn maneuver. That is one pretty blue planet right there. 10 out of 10 would crash again. Confirm destination coordinates. Nearest interstellar phase gate. Engaging ion boosters in three, two, one. Well, thank you Subnautica. Genuinely, it was a blast to enjoy this 100 day gameplay from start to finish. Amazing work, really. Thank you. And to those who watched to the end, thank you so much to you as well.